I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet That's tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. Hello everyone, in peace of Christ to all of you, please invite your friends, and I hope my voice is coming good and clear. Today we are going to have halal fun, as usual. It's halal always to make fun of stupidity. However, it can be very costly, because stupidity brings other stupid action, which is terrorism. Uh, yesterday, or uh, uh, 24 hours ago almost, uh, we have a Mohammedan from India. He grew a long beard, and he is studying study Islam in one topic just to refute me, you know. And then he called me, and the disaster happened as usual. You know, things happen. But I don't really care about this person. I feel sorry for him. Today our topic is the same, but with some questions, which is very important. If you remember when this guy, he called me, he said the following, just to refresh your memory. Anyone? He will call me and uh, we will see. It is Skype is dead. Move the video a little bit. Okay. Here we go. Okay, actually, I'm calling you today for something I saw in your video from last week live. All right. And not about what you're talking right but now. Can, can we talk about this black stone first, and then we go there, if you don't mind? I don't have expertise on the subject. You don't have any, any what? Expertise on this particular subject. Why aren't you a Muslim? Yes, I am a Muslim. I'm calling particularly okay. did, did about Al Qaeda. Is the black stone? Again, I did not. I do not have expertise on this particular exactly. subject. Exactly. I'm saying so. Why you are not? So how come you are expert about a, a different story, but you are not expert in this story? What happened? You are growing your beard for no reason. Listen, you asked me if any Abdul who is confident or who is brave right. to call whether so, it is at okay, whatever but, level so of let knowledge us make, he let has. Let us make it simple. Have you ever heard, I will go to your, your topic, the one you chose, no problem. But have you ever heard that Muslims Day and your prophet kissed the black stone? I do not want to talk about that. Can Why? you respect that? Just give me a few, uh, uh, you know, few, uh, one minute from your time, your uh, crisis time, you know, like just one minute. Do you, what do you think about this? Give me any answer. You, you think it's right. Why your prophet kissed the black stone? Well, if I give you any information that's not appropriate, I will be held accountable well, for that. I do not want to be held accountable. You are a growing yes, man. Yes. This is the problem with Mohammedans. They're afraid to say even their opinion about their belief. You will be held accountable. Well, what does that mean? He's terrified. So he want to talk only about specific thing. He knew now he is sure from the answer. The other one can cause him trouble. He can give an answer that can be a problem later. Islam is savage religion. 
what what will happen to you if you let us say you gave a wrong answer but anyway uh, he insists and he is why he insists because he studied that case only specifically today for me yes yes okay. yes so yes listen, I listen. To give here's, me a, here's an the reason of a growing man he, okay here, here's the reason i want to talk to you about okay mm -hmm. the quran says i invite you to the way with certain knowledge with knowledge of certainty i'm not okay. very certain about the questions that you're raising this week but mm -hmm. i have done my homework for the subject on the subject of al kilbar and i would like to address that yeah, but do you, you feel yeah. that it's fair for no, us to no, discuss no problem, that? no problem but you just said to me there's a verse in the quran saying you should not believe in something is not certainty no i said i invite no he said the quran says he said the quran says you see the second this is why muslims they prefer to speak to somebody else because anything they will say is going to be used against them he just said the Quran says don't believe in things without certainty, whatever, blah 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 blah. And then I ask him, the Quran says that where you know suddenly he denied it, he did not say that. He just he, you just said that a second ago. This is why the Muhammadan they enjoy talking to others, but they don't enjoy talking to me because with the others they can put all the garbage you want. And the Christians in the other side is not even listening, you know. You need to listen carefully to what they say. It's not just to give him the microphone and the guy he keep talking for 20, 10 minutes and now 10 minutes for me. He says something, stop. What is that? Continue. Yeah? I invite you yeah. with the knowledge of certainty. So when I've come here inviting you oh, and okay. everyone so, so watching. So you have the knowledge of uh, certainty. Okay, what is that? Go ahead. With respect to Al Khadr in last week video, all right, I said he said a few things that were quite um, offensive. But keeping the offensive side, well, there were a the few things that were logical. No problem. We are here. We give you freedom, my friend. My friend. To, to that's say that's all right. Let me allow, allow me not interrupt me. Allow me to state what I want to state, mm -hmm. and then we can discuss about the other things as well. Okay. So, with respect to what was logical, is that you did raise a few logical questions as to why does Quran, which says that you should not kill an innocent, mm -hmm. allow Khidr to kill, and why didn't Moses, who should have done something about it, didn't do anything about it? Okay. This you pointed out as a clear contradiction in the Quran. Okay. And that um, you raised a few questions about why was the innocent child killed, and that Quran teaches killing innocent children. I lost you. Yes. You said that uh, Quran teaches killing innocent children. Mm, that okay. was your accusation against the Quran. All right. This is referring to Al Kahf, chapter 18, verse 74, that okay. you referred back then, and you even pointed out to the verse where Musa, peace be upon him, mm. was questioning Al Khidr. All right. About killing the child. So, so before. Uh, we move into the context. This is your claim that um, Al Khidr killed an, killed an innocent child, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that Quran allows you to or teaches you to ch kill innocent children. All right. And Musa, being a Muslim, Al Khidr being a Muslim, mm -hmm. and the child being a Muslim, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and Musa didn't do anything about it, mm -hmm. while he should have done something about it, being the prophet and everything. So. Um, I want to take uh, back then you even uh, kind of dismissed a lot of things that I could have talked about. So I did a little bit of research. So here's here's what I would like you to know. And all those who are listening, this is in context, Surah Al-Kahf in the Quran, chapter 18, verse 65 to 82. This is the entire context. What you picked was one verse, which was verse 74, just to show that Musa was questioning someone mm. that he killed somebody. Okay. So looking at the context, Looking right. at the context, uh -huh. let's first understand that this context is talking about Musa, who was being corrected by uh, Musa alayhi salam, peace be upon him, being corrected for something he claimed when mm. he was giving a speech to his people, Bani Israel. They asked him a question, who is the most knowledgeable among the people? And he mm. said, I am 
the most knowledgeable among the people. Reference Jamia Tirbidi, Hadith number 3149. You can look it up. If you want, you can do that now. You can I do know, that later. I know it by heart. Okay. Great. And then Allah hmm. said to Prophet uh, Moses that you should have attributed that knowledge to Allah. There are people who are more knowledgeable than you. So Al Khidra was the person whom he pointed out to to take the lesson and when he he wanted to find out how he can meet he was given a detail in the description okay let's look at this guy <clears throat> musa is the prophet of allah supposedly you see muhammad is a fraud he lived with the jews suddenly musa became a became a, a prophet for uh, in his in his agenda he lived with the christians suddenly isa became a prophet in his agenda he lived with the Sabian, the Sabian prophets and gods, they became his gods in his agenda. This guy is like Obama, he is a Jew with a Jew, he's a Muslim with a Muslim, he's a Christian with a Christian. In the same time, he is an atheist with an atheist. And he is a homosexual with a homosexual. He is a straight with a straight. Muhammad is no different. So, Muhammad is a fool who heard the stories. Those are the stories the Jews they tell to their children, and they are not even... It's, the story is not even like that. Uh, Muhammad, he mixed between two stories. One about a person, his name is Gilgamesh. And the other one is about a person, his name is Musa. And none of them is true. Both his stories are fictions. And as usual, Muhammad, he take any stories, he like it, he put it in his book, and he claimed that Allah is the one who told him the story. If we look at the story, as this gentleman he said, Musa he said, I am the most knowledgeable. Allah he got him busted. He says, No, you are not. You are not. Okay, who? He said to him, There is a person, his name is Al Khadr. And now it's time to send you to school. Allah decided to send Al Khadr, sorry, Musa, to school. So he can learn from Al Khadr. That's what this guy he said to us. Think carefully again. I've done something about it, being the prophet and everything. So, um, like, I want to take I, back then. You even uh, kind of dismissed a lot of things that I could have talked about. So I did a little bit of research. So here's here's what I would like you to know, and all those who are listening, this is in context. Surah Al Kahf in the Quran, chapter 18, verse 65 to 82. This is the entire context. What you picked was one verse, which was verse 74, just to show that Musa was questioning someone mm. that he killed somebody. Okay. So looking at the context, looking right. at the context, uh -huh. let's first understand that this context is talking about Musa, who was being corrected by uh, Musa alayhi salam, peace be upon him, being corrected for something he claimed. When mm. he was giving a speech to his people, Bani Israel, they asked him a question, who is the most knowledgeable among the people? And he mm. said, I am the most knowledgeable among the people. Reference Jamiat Tirbidi, Hadith number 3149. You can look it up. If you want, you can do that now. You can I do know, that later. I know it by heart. Okay. Great. And then Allah mm. said to Prophet uh, Moses that you should have attributed that knowledge to Allah there are people who are more knowledgeable than you. So Al Khidra was the person whom he pointed out to to take the lesson. And when he he wanted to find out how he can meet, he was given a detail in the description. Mm -hmm. The description, mm -hmm. which in which involves certain particular specific instructions that he should carry a fish, and when the like fish what? disappears, that like what he should carry a fish in a okay. basket, uh -huh. and where the fish will disappear. At, right. at a point where the waters meet, okay. you will find uh, you will find the person whom you want to talk to. So when the, when the fish will touch the fountain of youth or the fountain of life, okay. the fish will come uh -huh. to life, right? See, you are adding something yeah. to my context. Let me give you the context and we can discuss about this, this thing as well. Because we're talking about verse 65 to 82. That's that's a big yeah, context. You are the one who mentioned hadith, right? It's you who mentioned hadith. Yes. So we can share hadith yes. at the same time, correct? So as long as yes. you mention hadith, I can share hadith. So yes. you said uh, he gave him, gave him a sign that you carry with you a, a fish, but you did not tell us what will happen to the fish. Is the fish going to go to, to come to life? The hadith specifies that yeah. where the fish disappears is where you will find the, the person. 
Okay, okay but you're does, seeking. Does the fish cut, uh, touch the fountain of, uh, of life, water, and come back to life? See, hadith, it means whatever the prophet said. I okay, know what hadith is, my friend. Why you yes, are trying yes, yes. to see, re see, see. rephrase? I'm asking you. You, you, so you asked me fish, a question. I'm the, answering. The fish, you the fish come back to life. To How properly. the fish will come back? All right, we will stop here. And I will open my Skype to give a chance to the Muslims to call us and tell us why Allah he sent Musa to school and what Musa he earned from that. Because you will see how stupid this religion is. And the reason we want Muslims to call us Mohammedans. And I want somebody he knows the topic very well. The smartest between you Muslims, Mohammedans. I challenge any Muhammadan to tell us is this a story is a smart story or made by a fool is it a smart story or a story made by a foolish person actually Mr. Imran I see him right now he is in, in, uh, in uh, Skype he can call me if he's listening I don't know Any Muslim can tell us what exactly Musa has learned from this? Let us see if Mr. Amran will call. Any Mohammedan? Somebody asking me, what do you think about the Mormon? The Mormon are cult like Muhammad. Why you want to be confused? It's exactly the same garbage. A guy, angels, they came to him, nobody saw them, they gave him a book, he translated the book and he gave them back the book. <laughs> I'm confused. Well, if you are confused, it's just mean you have, you have no, you, 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 you are not Christian. A true Christian will not be confused about such a silly cult like the Mormon or Muhammadan. Do we have any Muhammadan would like to call us? What exactly Musa has learned from this school? Allah, he sent Musa to school. What he learned? Waiting for any Muhammadan to tell us, let us go to the Quran. The yellow pages of Muhammad. We will notice here <coughs> the story of Al Khadr. The, the chapter, or the cave chapter, by the way, Al Kahf, is the, one of the most fantastic chapters in the Quran because it is the easiest way to prove Islam to be the most stupid cult fabricated stories ever. Let us open the chapter. When this guy, he called me, he said that I did not show the whole story because the whole story, you can, you know, the whole story is stupid anyway, but the most important part of it is getting the child, making a hole in the boat is not really important as killing a child. He's a Muslim child. So, you know, when Allah, he sent Musa to find Al-Khadr, the first question you ask yourself, where is Al-Khadr? And if you read the Quran, and this is the chapter 18 in front of us. You will find that the story has no contradiction, no, no, no introduction. Suddenly, the Quran talking about something weird. You can read it from the beginning to the end. Suddenly, nothing perverted, uh, pre prevented men from believing 
now when guidance came, has came to them, okay, and they're from asking forgiveness, okay, except the ways of the ancient. We repeat to them. But isn't it, this is a fabulous story from the ancient? And then he says, and we send not messengers except as a giver of a glad tiding. So why Muhammad wanna slaughter everybody? Is that a glad tiding? I'm going to kill you. And the warners, Muhammad was not warning. Muhammad, he give you three days, you convert or you die. But those who disbelieve, dispute with false argument. Okay, how our argument is false. And then you read the story, you know, anyway, a false argument, I guess the sperm come from the backbone of the man. Is that a false argument? This is the argument of who? We have a God, his name is Allah. He says the sperm come from the backbone. Christian prince laugh at it. Who is the one making false argument? We have a book says women have a sperm coming from their ribs, from the location of the necklace specifically. Quran accused that to be a false argument. Christian prince, he laughed at this answer. The sun set in murky water, the Muslim, they try to fix it. They say it appears, it sounds like it's, you know, but it's not Allah saying, no, it's Allah saying you are a liar. And Muhammad confirmed it in the hadith. Duct tape religion, they try to fix it. So false argument, but they cannot refute the argument. This is how false it is. And then you read the verse after it. This guy, he said to us, the story starts from verse number 56. So where is 56? There's no 56. I mean, there's, no, there's nothing about Musa's here. Okay, we go to 57. There's nothing about Musa's here. Okay, we go to the number uh, 58. There's... <laughs> there's nothing about Musa's there. <laughs> And then suddenly, you know, and here he says, and those towns, uh, you know, like, etc. He don't even tell us which town. Muslims, they have tried it between two brackets. We destroy them when they did wrong. Okay. Uh, but Muslims do not know where those towns are. It's just names. And then remember, suddenly, here we go. Remember. Okay, how they remember? Uh, do, do those people know the story? Did anyone heard this story before? Yes, remember, that's why he's saying, remember, it's an ancient story, it's a fabulous story, it's a, it's a fiction story, it's a, it's, a, it's a kid's story. And remember when Musa said to his servant, I will not give up until I reach the junctions of the two seas. Okay, well, hold on, so what is, well, when, this, when the journey started, It's like, you know, going to the movie in the middle of it. And then they start the movie with saying, Musa is saying to his servant, I will not give up. I need to find the junctions of the two seas. Like, so didn't we know who is this person first and where they are going? And where is the story? The guy, he told us that uh, Musa, he made a speech. And then uh, one person uh, ask him, well, who are you? You know, are you? Uh, who is the most knowledgeable? Are you the most knowledgeable? He said, yes, I am the most knowledgeable. What is the story? The Quran dropped to the middle of the story. This is why when uh, when some uh, some Abduls they say, when some Abduls they say. We can follow the Quran only. Yeah, sorry guys, the scream was not. Uh, but anyway, here we go. This is this is verse number fifty-six. There's nothing there about Moses. This is verse number fifty-seven. There's nothing about Moses. This is the one talk about they didn't accept because of their uh, uh, argument, false argument, as you see. <laughs> and this is fifty-seven. Nothing about Moses. And this is fifty-eight. Nothing about Moses. And this is 59, there's nothing about Moses. And then suddenly, I remember when Moses said to his servant, Muhammad, he started the movie from the end. What is the story?
Are we following people? If Allah is telling us the story, shouldn't he tell the story? What is the story? Suddenly, the director of the Hollywood movie, it's like an Indian movie, you know, starts suddenly uh, two people singing, hey, hey, ah, la, 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 and then 10,000 appear from the middle of nowhere. This is Indian movie. Shouldn't you tell us what happened? What is the conversation the guy was telling us in the video? That Musa, uh, he said, I am the most knowledgeable, and Allah wanted to correct him. So he said to him, no, there is somebody. Shouldn't this be in the, in the Quran? How come only this part in the Quran? And how we will understand now what happened? Why Musa is now looking for two seas? And what, what two seas is that? The junctions of the two seas. Find it. What junctions of the two seas? And then you go trying to find the junctions of the two seas, just to show you the stupidity of the religion. If we ask the Muhammadan now, where is the location of the junctions of the two seas? The one Musa is looking for. Because there's many junctions. Is that Panama? Where, where is that? Is that the Red Sea? What junctions of two seas? What does that mean? Is that Constantinia, the Black Sea and the Mediterranean Sea? Is that the Red Sea and the Mediterranean Sea? Is that the Persian Sea? And what, what, what is that? So we go to the interpretation, you will see the Muslims are putting their finger in their mouth and they are sucking it, trying to find out where is the place place. So how Moses was able to find out? Now we have satellite. If you say to me, go and find Al Khadr. Okay, I will find Al Khadr when you take with you a fish. This is what the guy, he said to us, take with you a fish. He did not even give him direction. He did not give him an address. He did not give him a name of a city. He says, go and find Al Khadr. Okay, how we will find Al Khadr? Take with you a fish. Uh-huh. So if you want to go, let us go to the video, hold on. Where we will find the location? Take with you a fish. What the heck? So I can go in direction, does any direction, does it matter? Yes, just take with you a fish. And by the way, it's not a fish, it's a wheel. Back to life, because this is how they will know the location, correct? You are not allowing me to answer. When no, I'm trying to answer... Conversation. Consider yourself the funny, the funny, the fountain of life. All this time he is talking, and now he is saying, you are not allowing me to answer. The second you say a statement, the Muslim, they, they, he cry, he say, you are not allowing me to answer, or you are not answering. Life, okay. the fish will come uh -huh. to life, right? See, you are adding something yeah. to my context. Let me give you the context and we can discuss about this, this thing as well, because we're talking about verse 65 to 82. That's, that's a big yeah, context. But you are the one who mentioned hadith, right? It's you who mentioned hadith. Yes. So we can share hadith yes. at the same time, correct? So as long as yes. you mention hadith, I can share hadith. So yes. you said uh, he gave him, gave him a sign that you carry with you a fish, but you did not tell us what will happen to the fish. Is the fish going to go to, to come to life? The hadith specifies that yeah. where the fish disappears is where you will find the, the person okay, that you're, but you're does, seeking. Does the fish cut, uh, touch the fountain of, uh, of life, water? Come. So how you find the direction? This is a prophet of God sent by God for a mission. And now just walk. Walk where? Walk in direction of Europe, direction of Africa, or direction of Asia. Where? Because remember, Musa is in the middle of the Middle East. So he can just go to the north. He is going to go to Europe. Go to the south. He is going to Africa. Going to the east, he can keep going until he go to China. So where he will go? Oh, just take a fish with you. Look, uh, this is school. How we find the school? Take a fish with us, and that is a wheel. It is a wheel. Come back to life. See, hadith, it means whatever the prophet said. 
okay, know what Hanif is, my friend. Why you yes, are trying yes, to yes. See, re see, see. rephrase? I'm asking you. You, you, so, you ask me fish, a question, the, I'm answering. The fish, you should the allow fish me come the back to life. To answer it how properly. the fish will come back to life? Because this is how they will know the location, correct? You are not allowing me to answer. When no, I'm trying to answer... Conversation. Consider yourself drinking, all, drinking coffee with me. We don't want to jump over things. We want people to have full understanding. I'm sorry, what's you are your calling. name? What's your name? Christian. Okay. And this is what is, 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 is sometimes is really silly. A person, he called you and he was watching your videos for a century and he knew your name, Christian Prince, and then he asked you, what's your name? Like I'm talking to who? Uh, oh, okay, I forgot. Yeah, this is Muhammad. He was bewitched. Now he remember what's, what's your name? Okay. Well, Christian, yeah. you didn't, first of all, you didn't allow me to give me, give the context. I was. All this talk, I did not give him the chance to give the context. He told us about who a person, he told him, are you the most knowledgeable? Allah told him, oh, the whole story. And I'm not telling him, I'm not giving him a chance. I was hoping that you would have, no, you'd I respect want you to me give full to give... context. I want you to give yes. us full, full coverage of the story. So people will know yes. as long as we started but if you from, interrupt where, me... from the beginning, etc. So I'm asking you. Allah, if you interrupt the sign, my friend, I like I like listen, to go listen. over details. Does it, does it hurt you? Does it hurt you? To be honest, I mean, be honest with me. Does it hurt you to give us more details? So Allah, he told you to carry a fish. See, okay, what the fish would do? Tell us what the fish would do. What you're doing is you're interrupting me. I'm and not, you're I'm not. You, I, I want you to see, give us the whole story, not you, a part of the story. So you haven't, Allah, yes. he told, did you mention to me that Allah, he told them, carry with you a fish? Did you mention that? Yes. Okay, what the fish would do? Go ahead. Where the fish disappears, he will okay. find How the, the fish will disappear. Looking. How the fish will disappear is not a, not something that is given to him as a sign. The sign that's given is no, no, where the fish you, will disappear. See, they will not answer. That's why they fear they fear to, to, to call me because every single question count and it's very serious. How the fish will disappear. It's not how the fish disappear is a sign, is the fish disappearing because how the fish will disappear. We have a dead fish. It's not a fish, it's a whale, again. In a basket. I never heard of somebody, a moose must be a giant to carry a whale in a basket. And the sign is, it's not important. The, the sign is the fish disappearing. And how this appeared is not important. No, it is, it's important. You don't want to talk about it because it's embarrassment. Muhammad was teaching people that there's a fountain of youth, a fountain of life. And this is how people come back to life. Until now we have zero Muslim trying to contact us in Skype. Right? They're afraid, I understand. So there is a fish. Okay, take with you a whale. This is what it says in Arabic. But the story started with saying, where the Qala Musa, it doesn't say remember by the way, and when Musa said, even the word not remember is not there. When Musa said to his servant, what is the word boy? Fata is young, anyway. I will not give you up, okay, until I reach the junctions of the two seas. But where Allah, he said to him, go to this direction and the junctions of the two seas. They will say to you, that can be found in the Hadith. So why is in the Quran? Why the story is cut off in the Quran? Maybe the goat ate that part? Because obviously here the story is cut off. Those guys are ready, obviously traveling for a long, long period to the point, Musa is saying, I'm not going to give up. You say that, when you are really, at least somebody, somebody with you is giving up. Like it's, we, we don't find it. You don't say I'm not going to give up unless you suffer from finding what you are looking for. So I will not give up until I reach the junctions of the two seas. Okay. Even if I spend years and years in traveling, so here we notice that Musa's, 
is a messenger of God and he is a leader of his nation. And now Musa is going camping and hiking, looking for knowledge. Sad guru, the one who speaks too much, he says nothing. It is time to send Musa to learn so he can be a guru. Guru Musa is going to learn from Guru Al Khadr. And Guru Al Khadr is nowhere to be found. Allah did not give Muhammad and uh, 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 Musa as an address. The only thing he knew that he needed to take with him a whale. And when the whale escaped, how the way we escape, they don't want to talk about it because it's embarrassment. Let us go to the hadith so we can laugh. This is the story here. This is the story this Abdul he was reading for us from. This is what he studied, you know, like he took him to some time to study and he was now like focus, right? So, uh, it was said to him, keep a salted fish. It's a salted fish. But in Arabic it says, hutan malihan, which means salted wheel, not a fish. Then, take with you salted fish. Okay, who said that to him? Thereupon he said, My Lord, direct, direct me to him. It was said to him, supposedly Allah talking, keep us salted, oh, we will go with the fish for now, as a provision for your journey. So the salted fish is to eat it. Okay. The place where that fish would be lost, you will find that man. Look at this amazing story. You take with you a fish, take with you a sardine. When the sardine disappeared, the man is there. So he set forth where, okay, well, take with you a fish to where? I mean, who is the crazy here? At least say to him, go north. At least say to him, go south. Just walk and take with you a fish. Dead fish. Shouldn't you say, go to uh, uh, Morocco, go to Egypt, go to uh, uh, Saudi Arabia at that time, the Arabian Peninsula, anyway, just go where he will go with the fish? Anyway, just take a fish. So he set forth, and a young slave along with him, until they came to the place, uh, There's a rock. I mean, look at this translation here. I mean, this this idiot who translated the the thing, you think this is a name? Sahra, Sahra is a is a rock. Why you don't translate? But this is a Sahra, where supposedly something will happen there. But he did not find any clue, so he proceed on and left that young man there. Okay, the fish began to stare in water, and the water was assumed the form of an arc over the fish. So what? What is that? What? Any Muhammadan can tell us what's going in? What's going on? Assume what? And uh, so the fish began to stir in water, and that and the water assumed the form of an arc over the fish. Mm -hmm. Where is the water coming from? What the story here saying? They arrived to a rock. 
You did not find any clue. Where is the water coming from? Suddenly, you just put water there. And now the, the fish is swimming in the water. Hmm. Continue. The young man said, I should meet Allah Apostle and inform him. But he was made to forget. Look at this drama. Allah made him forget. Maybe not Allah, maybe Shaitan. We will see later. Which is the same. And when they had gone beyond, and look, guys, look at this story. The, the dead fish or the dead whale start moving. The servant, he decided to tell his master. Well, I should tell my master the fish is moving. He forgot. I mean, this is happening every day that we have a dead whale for, for maybe a year or maybe a month or maybe a week. And then it start moving. He forgot to tell. I mean, they are together next to each other in a trap. What do you mean he made to be forgotten? This story is not even good for kids. This is the servant and this is his master and they are in a journey and they are together in the same place. It's not like the guy in his bedroom. How he forgot? He was made to forget, brother. He was made. Allahu Akbar. Okay? So he saw the, the, the fish moving, brother, and he made to be for, uh, forget to tell him. Okay. Conspiracy theory. He Musa said to the young man, bring breakfast. Like, what the heck? Bring breakfast? It was morning then. Finally, there's some information. It was morning. So they spent the whole night there. We have been exhausted because of the journey. And Moses was not exhausted until he had crossed that particular place. Look at this guy, how much energy he have. When he arrived there, he felt exhausted. Allah want him to, to settle down there. The destiny. So, uh, until he arrived there to meet Al-Khudr. And then the youth was reminded and said, didn't you see as we reach the Sahra, which means the rock, he forgot the fish? What the heck? He forgot the fish? But look what happened. Moses is asking the guy to prepare a breakfast. Moses want to eat the fish, which Allah told him, keep it until you lose it. So Moses is breaking the command of Allah. He want to eat the only GPS he has. Allah gave him a GPS. It is the dead fish. Moses now is angry. He want to eat the GPS. And this is why the servant, he remember. Oh, I forgot to tell you. The, <clears throat> yeah, the breakfast is gone. What? The breakfast, the fish. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, uh. But why Moses want to eat the breakfast of the, the fish, which is Allah has signed for him? Is it this is the GBS, the only way to find the guy? He want to eat it. What an idiot. So when he said, uh, you know, when we arrived to the Sakhra, which means the, the rock, I forgot the fish, and Satan, Satan alone, who was made me uh, forgetful, forgetful? I like this word, forgetful. Of it, shaitan. It was shaitan, brother. It looked like destiny controlled by, not by Allah only, it is controlled by shaitan. Isn't it you, Muslim, you say that everything happened to you, done to you, is made by Allah? So how shaitan made him for God? I will, I will tell you. Allah make shaitan make you forget. Ah, oh. oh. okay. Yeah, crazy glue. It was, it was, it is strange that he has been able to find the way to the ocean too. Look, how he knew this? The guy, he lost the fish. How he knew now that the fish is in the ocean and find his way to the ocean? So suddenly there is water, and then suddenly there's an ocean. He said, this is what we sought for us. Then they return, retracting the, their steps. And then the companion, he pointed to him the location where the fish had been lost. Moses began to search. 
him there. He suddenly saw Al Khadr warped in a cloth and laying on his back. Oh boy. Al Khadr laying on his back. Take a note. Prophet of Allah, they lay in their back, not in their side. There's a fatwa, by the way, about you should not lay in your in your in your belly. Because if you do that, shaitan will do boom boom to you. Genie. He said to him, Assalamu alaikum. Look at this. The Khadr speak Arabic. Oh, speak Hebrew, sorry. He removed his clothes from his face. The guy is covering his face. Like in the movies, you know. And he said, Wa alaykum salam. Who are you? Look at the question, like, who are you? He said, Musa, I am Moshe Khabibi. He said, who is Moshe Khabibi? He said, Musa, uh, he said, Moshe from the children of Israel. He said, what brought you here? Look at the investigation now. It's a deep investigation. He said, I have come, I have come so that you may Teach me what you have been taught of righteousness. Stop. So the purpose to come here is to learn righteousness. Any Muslim have a comment? Any Muhammadan? What is the purpose of Musa to come here? To learn righteousness. Astonishing. Now let us jump to the Quran to learn the righteousness which Al Khadr is going to teach Musa and try not to die laughing. <laughs> so when they arrive to the junctions of the two seas, which God knows where, actually, hold on. I wanted to show you where the junctions of the two seas, just to show you how the Muslims try to figure out their religion. This is in chapter 18, verse number 61. 18, 61. We go here. Look at the interpretation, brother. Look at the interpretation, science. And when they reach the point where the two meet, the two what? Between the two seas, like, where is that? Because they don't know. And this is the interpretation. You are just reading again the verse. This is the interpretation of Ibn Abbas, the cousin of the Prophet. But he did not give any interpretation. He just read the verse again. We changed a different guy. Let us see another Abdul. The Jalalain. Ah, here we have more details. Alhamdu to Allah. And al -uzza. So when they reach the junctions, the juncture between the two between the two seas, they forgot their fish. Joshua, the guy, his name is Joshua. Where do you get the name from? No introduction, just take it. He forgot his luggage. Leave him behind at the moment of departure. Departure. Okay, that sounds like an airplane. And Musa uh, forgot to remind him. Well, double, uh, double homicide. The guy he forgot and Musa forgot. So it ate it, it, the fish, made its way to the sea. Like how the fish made its way to the sea. I mean, how the fish can walk to the sea? Or the whale? That is formed it through God forming it. By boring that like through a bower with the passages that long enclosed. Like, what the heck? I'm getting dizzy here. That's an amazing miracle. And you said to me, there's no miracles in the Quran? And this is why so, because God exalted be he, held back 
the flow of the water preventing it from engulfing the fish. That's deep. That's deep. And it's water would draw from around it. The fish remind us like a cliff without closing. Wow. So the fish jump in the water, but look what happened, brother. The water split to open the way to the fish, and the water never come back. It became like an arrow in the top or like a rainbow. Closing that was beneath in a cliff stood still. Mm. You know what? I think this is not enough. I need to see what Ibn Kathir he say about this. Hold on. He is smarter than those because he is coming from a newer generation. He's like a YouTuber of his time. Yeah, this is exactly Ibn Kathir. He tried to fix the stupidity in his religion by lying. The biggest liar ever, Ibn Kathir. He is the YouTuber of his time. Trying to refute the Christians and how they laugh at him. I mean, Muhammad. So we go, let's see, I will put it in the, in the screen for you. Give me a second. We go to. Uh, where is Ibn Kathir? Here we go. Okay, we open Ibn Kathir 18. It's fun, isn't it? I'm sure many of you now feel like, you know, going back on time when you were a kid watching Mickey Mouse. This is Mickey. Mouse is coming. Okay. All right, here this is Ibn Kathir here. He had been commanded to carry salted fish with him, and it had been said to him, when you lose the fish, it will be a sign that you have reached the right place. So they set out and traveled until reached the junctions of the two seas, where there was a spring called Ainul Hayat. The guy, he refused to talk about it in the video. Remember I asked him? Because it's an embarrassment. The spring of life. Ta -da -da, ta -da -da, ta -da -da. Somebody called the Pirate of the Caribbean and tell them right now we found the fountain of youth. If you like to drink from it, we have some of it in the Tafsir of Nikathir and the Hadith of Muhammad. Ta -da -da, ta -da -da, ta -da -da. The spring of life is here. Ta -da -da, ta -da -da, ta -da -da. You want some? I will send it to you all the way to Kashmir. The spring of life is here. So, this is how the fish come back to life, the whale. Because simply come in touch with the water of a spring of life, which nobody come in touch with it and not come back to life. Actually, this is why I'm alive. I'm, by the way, I, I died long time ago, long centuries ago. But what happened, brother, I know the location of the spring of life. So I went there, you know, I told my friends, when I die, take me there, so put some drops in my, you know, nose and uh, my toes. And then, you know, I became alive and now I, I'm alive I, forever. So. Here it says, there was a spring called Al Hayat. Al Hayat in Arabic means the life. Ain al Hayat. Ain, Ain in Arabic means eye. But we use the same word for a spring, like eye of a, a water, you know, eye of the spring of water. So Ain al Hayat, the spring of life, and they went to sleep there, and the fish felt the drop of that water. So it come back to life. Look at this. Look at this. 
Hold on, hold on. I want to go back to the Quran. I want to go back to the Quran. Is that the Quran who says that we Christians, we have false argument? Did the Quran say that the reason we don't believe because we have a false argument? In verse number 55. Read, read with me, read with me, read. Read, read, read. read. Why they don't believe? Why? Why they don't believe? Because they have false argument. It's obvious. It's us who have false argument. Muhammad is saying the truth. Allah is a true God. There is a fountain of youth. And if a drop of water fell in your fish, dead whale, your whale will come back. Don't take your mother-in-law there after the funeral, okay? Finally, you get rid of her. <laughs> what the heck? And supposedly we are the one who have a false argument. Hmm? False argument? We do have false argument. And you do have a true argument. That there is a prophet, his name is Moshe. He was sent to school. He did not know the address. He took with him a fish. The fish is dead and salted. He put it in a basket. When he walked in the street, walking down the street, la 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 carry my fish. Why you carry your fish? This is my GBS at that time. So they have false argument. We Muslims, we have the true argument. Okay. Okay, cleanse them friends, cleanse them friends. Do you have a salted whale? No. See, you have a false argument. Now be honest with you, how many of you is convinced that Quran is coming from the true God? It is from the true God, brother. And actually, that Abdul, he said to me, I take only what the prophet said, that the guy who said the fountain of youth or fountain of life, it was a guy, his name is Sufyan. Uh, go back to the video, please. And this guy, he put this picture there because he knew he's going to be famous. I mean, I think he took a picture. He took a lot of money. Look at the jacket. Look at them. I mean, with the smile, my friend, the smile, you became famous. Okay. I want to learn from you. How the fish will disappear? However, that is that is up to Allah. How He will make things no. work so is, it true, is up to Him. So is it true that some of the fountain of youth or life, water, fall in the fish and then the fish come to life? Yes or no? That is the saying of one of the Sahabi, one of the uh, companions of the Prophet. The so, Prophet himself did not say that. So, but it so, is a part okay, of the hadith. Uh, okay, so, so I will is, not deny that. So, so the, uh, uh, the companion he said, but isn't the companion reporting what the prophet said? No, not that part. Not that part. So where where the companion learned their stories from? The, see, the hadith, that's why I was going to give you the definition of the hadith. Hmm. When we talk about the hadith, it is what the traditionally what has been narrated in the hadith itself the one that i'm quoting mm -hmm. i'm quoting from jamia tirmidhi 3149 mm -hmm. where ibn abbas said mm -hmm. that so and so like now al bakali claimed that musa -Salam, was not the musa of bani israel when mm -hmm. uh, when he went to meet al khidr but mm -hmm. the part that you are specifically talking about mm -hmm. where the fish are um, will become alive is mm -hmm. mention of sufyan one of the narrators okay. who said, but he's not quoting the prophet. He, the Sufyan. No, he is quoting the prophet because first of all, nobody says to him what you, where you said, where you get this from. Secondly, Muhammad, he mentioned that in many places. As an example, let me find you a different hadith. Uh, here we go. This is Sahih Muslim. And this is the one is talking here is Muhammad. Sahih Muslim. 1A2A, as you see in the screen. All mankind, 
they will be resurrected from death by the water of life which is going to be ejaculate and this is why this guy you remember this guy what his name uh, Abu Layth Mufti Layth the Muslim gets so upset from him when he wear the umbrella he put the umbrella in his head because Allah will ejaculate so here uh, the people who they are dead will sprinkle over them the water called the water of life. And that will bring them back from the dead. And when they pure the water of life on them, they will come down, they come up like the same as a plant come from the ground. So when this Abdul, he says, uh, this is not the prophet saying that, well, your prophet is obsessed with the fountain of life. And if you go and read the story of Gilgamesh, you will see that Gilgamesh was looking for the fountain of life, and he found it in Al-Bahrain, exactly as it says in the Quran. You see, in the Quran, it says, they translate the word Bahrain as the two seas, but in Arabic it is not two seas. It means two seas, yes. Bahrain is a location, it's called, it's, the country is called Bahrain. It's a country, it's called Bahrain. This is the country we are talking about. This is where Gilgamesh, he went there to find the fountain of youth. So here, when it says, I remember when Musa said to his boy, servant, I'm not going to leave until I arrive to the, uh, you know, to the two seas. The, the fact it is Bahrain in Arabic. This is what Bahrain, the name of the country means, Bahrain. And this is where Muhammad, he got his story from, proving to us again that he's a fraud. And then, you know, the, the title is our, our video. Until now, there's not a single Muslim there to call us. Take a note. Even I text the guy, he was online. I text him to call me, uh, Imran Fazil. Uh, he went, uh, actually, it says available. Let us call him, let us call him. Maybe we can get him for a dinner. When I came here, it was saying it was online. Now it says he's on offline. So the story here that Allah, he sent Musa to learn to be righteous. But then we find that Musa is not learning righteousness. He's really learning evil. Because Al-Khadr, and by the way, his name is Al-Khadr. How many of you knows what Al-Khadr means? When the Muslim, they say Al-Khadr, that alone is a, is a, is a, is a fiction story. Al-Khudr means Mr. Green. Why he was called the Green? Because when he sat in any floor, even if the grass is dead, the grass will turn green. Why is that? Because he drank from the fountain of life. <laughs> And I find it funny and astonishing. There is somebody, uh, you know, he, he uh, you see like some uh, uh, few blonde people converting to Islam, or even not blonde, whatever they are. I find it astonishing that how stupid those people are not to see what we see. Is this really what make you convert to this garbage? Why Al Khadr? He was called Al Khadr. Any Muslim can tell us? 
Is it true because he drank from the fountain of youth? And whatever he said, his ass will make whatever underneath of him green? Let us find the hadith. Here we go. <laughs> this is Al Bukhari. They will say to you, it's weak, this is weak, this is weak, this can't be true. Prophet, he did not teach us his stupid things. This is not true. Mr. Green, he was called a green because whatever his ass said, it turned a green. Uh, Negla, he's saying, why do you always deflect criticism of your religion? Would you like to explain some questionable things in your book? My friend, I do not need to explain anything in my book. Because your strap is stupid prophet already approve it. So are you a Muhammadan or you are a Muhammadan? Can you? Can you explain some questionable? No, I will not explain it because your prophet, he says, I believe in thee and the one who sent thee. So you should question your prophet when you question me. Because how your stupid prophet, he says, confirming what is with them. And then he make an oath, put his hand on the book. It says, I believe in thee and the one who sent thee. So how come you don't believe in the book was sent by thee? And Muhammad, he believe in the book of thee when the book have a questionable question about it. Are you afraid to show the proper narration? Abdul, this is Al-Bukhari. Proper narration. Here we go. Are you afraid to show the proper narration? It's Al-Bukhari, Ab Abdul. Are you afraid to show the proper narration? <laughs> just get it, Just go. Just let, let, let your dad talk to me. So the Prophet said Al-Khadr was named so because he set over the barn white land turned green. With the plantation after he set over it. Brother, Al Khadr, he dropped from his ass the fountain of youth water. Not only he drank from the fountain of youth and he alive until now. By the way, Al Khadr, according to Muslims, he attended the funeral of Noah and he was in the funeral of Moses and he was in the funeral of, uh, in the funeral of, of Muhammad. Just because he drunk, just get out of here, Nagla. Show the chain, show the chain. Get out, get out, stupid idiot. This is your business. Go. You have no time for stupidity. So show the chain, so the chain, so the chain. So if the chain is not good, why you write it there? Chain, show the chain. <laughs> Silly, stupid people. Unbelievable. Don't get married, please. Don't get married. I feel sorry for women. I mean, imagine you are a woman and you marry a husband like this. Oh boy, no, no, please, no, please. That is the biggest penalty. If your mother hates you really, she will wish you to marry a fool. Because you will wish to disappear every day. Oh boy. My husband is so smart, he's so genius. Why you don't show us the chain? Okay, this is your chain, you idiot. You are one. Didn't you see it before you put it in the book? So you must tell me, don't see the chain, what chain? Well, you, mean, you remind me of the story of the guy, the uh, Middle East, my cousin, what my cousin, you know, Saudi. He went uh, to uh, school and Saudi Arabia didn't teach philosophy, it's haram. I don't know about now. So he went abroad and he went to school and uh, there's, a, there's, a, uh, there's a class about uh, philosophy and logic. So my cousin, he asked the teacher, he said to him, sir, what logic means? But what logic mean? The teacher, he said, logic is about a knowledge of learning, investigating, so we can learn something from something else. My cousin, Mr. Abdul, he got nothing from this. Like, what? What does that mean? The teacher, he insists to give him an example. So he said to him, as an example, I will ask you a question, and from that question, I will know more information about you. My cousin, he agreed. He said, okay. 
So do you have a chain at home? My cousin said, yes. The teacher of philosophy and logic, he says, as long as you have a chain, that's when you have a dog. My cousin was like, what? Yes, I have a dog. The teacher, he said, as long as you have a chain, you have a dog. That's when you have a yard. My cousin, he said, wow, yes, I have a chain, I have a dog, I have a yard. As long as you have a chain, you have a dog, you have a yard. You know, that's mean you have a nice house. He said, absolutely, yes. I have a chain, I have a dog, I have a yard. He said, as long as you have a big house like this, have a yard, etc., your mother will take care of it. He said, yes, my mother is for sure taking care of it. Need a lot of work. He said, as long as you have a chain and you have a dog and you have a yard and you have a nice house and your mother is taking care of it, that means your mother is a decent woman. My cousin was like, what? So he said to him, the teacher, see, from the chain we learned that your mother is a good woman. My cousin, he loved it. So he went in the street. The first one he, say, he saw, he asked him, do you have a chain? He said to him, no. So he said to him, your mother is a whore. Because this is how they learn logic. The teacher, he just taught him that the one who have a chain, his mother is a good woman. Obviously, the one who don't have a chain, his mother is a whore. Welcome to the Abdul logic. Aren't you the one who put the chain there? Isn't it this is your Sahih Hadith? Isn't it this is your translation? Isn't it this is your website? Show me your chain, I will tell you who you are. Anyway, anyway. Very logical, very deep. So anyway, uh, maybe we should cut this video, uh, make it two videos. Like this one is about a comedy about the, the fabulous of Muhammad, the fairy tales, you know? Yeah. Anyone dare to call me? Be honest. What are you afraid of from? What are you afraid of from? What you will lose anyway? Your dignity? Are you afraid to show your stupidity? There's not a single one of you is a smart to speak to me. The truth hurt. And listen. If you call me and bring victory to Allah, Allah might bless you and make your ass a blessed ass. So you sit in the ground, you make everything green. You know what? Why we don't invite Al Khadr to Saudi Arabia, which is a desert, or Iraq, or many lands? They are all desert. Most of Islamic countries are desert. Well, you know, just let him sit with his ass in the ground. Just, just move him from place to place. He gets from the car, he sit in the floor, he make it green. Listen, by setting he made it green. So imagine if he's, he, he put some fertilizer from his bum. I mean, you can imagine. It's going to look like Indonesia. It's going to look so green like Indonesia. Why? Because now he put poo poo. Because he just sit on the ground and turn a green. So can you imagine what will happen if he do poo poo? Just imagine. Are you going to say your prophet is not telling the truth? Guys, are you having a good time? Don't forget to give us a like if you like us. Don't forget to give us a dislike. If you are a Muslim, by the way, if you are a Muslim and you give us this like, Allah will give you women with big boobs. Get the big boobs and give us this like if you are a Muslim. If you are a Christian, sorry, I cannot give you big boobs. Eh. That is out of my control. I mean, look at this religion. It's really convincing, brother. It's very convincing. If you believe in this God, Allah will give you big boobs. Women will be big boobs. What do you want more? What anyone want to want more? I mean, what life is about? Hmm? Big boobs mean a lot of milk. Alhamdulillah. 
I mean, why they have to be so big, man? I mean, if there is something wrong, isn't it Allah who created the small and the big ones anyway? Are you saying to me that Allah, when he created the small ones, he made them by mistake? What the heck with this? You know what? I can increase the view of my videos just by making a promise of big boobs. If you are a Muslim and you like to earn the big boobs, share my link. Ta -da -da, ta -da -da, ta -da -da. Booby, booby, booby. This is God. Hmm. Uh. Uh, Faisal, Faisal saying the following. He says, Faisal, how are you, my friend, my friend? Why you don't call me Faisal? I will, I will take what you said and put it in the screen. And I want you to keep posting things because we can use them in a very nice way. So look what Faisal is saying. Uh, Faisal al mun mutari 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 Faisal mutari mutari CP, you are a shame and disgraced your family. You were not raised well as a kid. I can tell you were bullied. Look, hold on. What if I show you the hadith that the Prophet was bullied? Are you talking about Muhammad or about me? You can't tell that nobody can bully me. I'm the last one who can anyone do bully with him. You can tell. I mean, do you see how much I am not confident? You can bully me. I will whip the floor with you in two seconds. But as I know that your prophet was bullied, and he was a bully too. Actually, even your God was a bully. Look, let us go there. Allah, he decided to bully the uncle of Muhammad. Can you believe it? Look, we have a bully. The whole Quran is a bully book. A bully bull. Is that God talking? Perish the hand of the father of the flame. Perish he. And no profit for him. And all his wealth will not gain. Uh, Brent uh, soon will be in fire blazing flame. And uh, okay, you know what? His wife. Okay, his wife. Let me tell you about his wife. His wife, she will carry a robe. Uh, is going to make from uh, you know from leaves around her neck, okay? And uh, she will be, she will be carrying wood for fuel, okay? Bully, you know. And uh, the rope will be twisted, a rope from palm uh, life uh, fiber, brother. Is it? This is a bully. What is this? This is how God he talk. This is a God who can do nothing about it. I mean, who, who are you? You are God. Who is this guy? Is a guy. Can you believe that there is a God who is the Almighty? He go to his office to bully a guy in YouTube? Abu Lahab, he made a YouTube about the Prophet. The Prophet complained to Allah. Allah sent him the solution. I'm going to bully him, okay? Don't worry. <laughs> I want some coffee. You know, Faisal Lamtayri, you remind me of a guy whose name is Lamtayri too. He went to the movie first time, and then when he get out, they ask him how was the movie. He said he 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 he, he is good, he's good. By the time I finish watching the movie, uh, by the time I finish saying Assalamu Alaikum and shaking hands, the movie was over. And I think this is you. I remember you now. The guy, he come at the end of the movie saying to me, you must be bullied, huh? Ah, he's trying to find it. See, this is philosophy. This is philosophy. The guy, he thought about it. Why this guy is laughing at the Quran? He must be bullied. Mm -hmm. That's deep. That's so deep. Or so good, my friend. Do you want to be an admin in our chat? Faisal? I can make you an admin. You can bring your four wives with you, you know, to help you. Bully. And you know, to talk about bully, like not to forget that Muhammad, 
is God he made the verses in the Quran to bully the wives of Muhammad what the heck yes brother unbelievable look at this the wives of Muhammad are fighting with Muhammad because he's a perverted man and look at this brother I will take a break from the story about Moses now we maybe we'll continue next time in the video but let's stop here when the prophet disclosed matter of confidence to one of his concert okay and she the 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 log the alleged I don't know how to read this word sorry I'm an Arab uh, to another like what the heck and Allah made it known to him He confirmed the part, therefore, and he repudiated. What the heck is this? A part? This is God talking? Okay, let me tell you now. So Muhammad, he told his wife something. The wife told the other wife something else. And he told something. The same something he said, told her, he told her, he, she told something. Then... The other wife, she told something to Muhammad about the something she told from the first wife. And then Allah, he informed the prophet about the something. You know the thing? I mean, this is God talking. Muhammad told his wife, and the wife told the other wife, and the other wife told the other wife, and then the other wife, and then Allah, he told him what they are talking about, which he said to them. That's the... This is God talking. It must be from God. And then look, look at the miracle. He said to him, Who told you this? He said, He told me who knows. Like what? The all knowing. What do you mean he told you? You are the one who told him the story. I mean, the guy is the first one who told them the story. Or what he promised. And then he, she said to him, who told you that? He told me the all-knowing. But you are the one who told them the story. And then Allah, he made a threat, a bully, bully threat. Okay, hold on. If you turn a few, if you don't repent to Allah, okay? If you don't repent to Allah, and your heart still in, inclined, and, uh, you know, if you don't repent, Allah would wage war on you. Look what happened. Truly, Allah is his protector. Oof, 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 oof. Brother, Muhammad, you need the protection of Allah because this is involved two women. Like one woman is a, is a, is a disaster. Two women is overdue. You don't want to play games with two women. I'm a Muslim. Maybe this is ultimate fart. Let us see. Uh, this is ultimate fault, yeah. <laughs> I'm a Muslim. You are the Muslim. You are the last one to be considered a Muslim. You don't believe in the Quran. You don't believe in the Hadith. You don't believe in Arabic. You believe the Arab are stupid people. So your prophet is stupid. Do we have any Muslim? So Muhammad, he received a verse from Allah saying, truly Allah is protector. And who else? Allah is not enough. Allah is weak. And Jibreel, look at this. Let us come together. Who is going to join the army to fight two women? They are five foot tall. Brother, it's not easy. The war was big. Truly Allah is his protector. Can you imagine the threat the Prophet, peace be upon him, is facing? Two women against one man. 
Not enough. And Jibreel. Not enough. And every righteous Abdul. Not enough. And furthermore, the angels. All of this against two women. If Allah protect him already, why we need Jibreel? And why we need the righteous Muslims? And why we need the furthermore, the angels? Is that a book written by a Mickey Mouse? Or by God? The Bible says, if God is with me, who could be against me? That's it. God was with me. What Jibreel? What, you know? Allah, he's a protector. It's over. Shall we go to the title about what, what, uh, what Musa has he learned? Or we should make it in different video, like make second term video. What do you think? Right? <clears throat> A Christian Prince fan channel. My friend, you are acting like the Muslims now. You are trying to change our topic to make it about something else. Secondly, how many times we say that if a Muslim he quote a verse, read the chapter and you will see it's not what they are saying. Why well, you are being foolish? People are foolish. Are you trying to make Islam escape the humiliation now? So you want to talk about the Bible? That's what the Muslims do. They just talk about your Bible because you don't want to talk about his Quran, it's embarrassing. Some Christians are no different. They are the same. Foolishness is their signature. When we are done, we say, you know, let us talk about other things. We can do that. Why in the middle, you know, the Muslim they say, the Muslim they say, who cares what the Muslim says? What do you expect the Muslim says? Faisal, he said, you have religion, you have mine. Faisal, that is the most stupid statement ever I heard. So if you have the religion, I have mine. Why your Quran keep calling us names? And why your Quran says kill the Christians and the Jews? I will tell you why. Because you are using abrogated verses. You are a fraud. Muhammad, he said that verse when he was weak. You have your religion, I have mine. And as long you mention this, just to show you how stupid Muhammad is. This is the chapter of Al-Kafirun. Muhammad is a prophet of God, the Muslim they claim. The prophet of God, he received messages from his God. That's wonderful. And he said in his messages, and this is what you are quoting for me. He says, and I will not worship that you have been worshipped, nor you will worship what I will worship. If you don't like translation, which is not good translation, by the way, we can't change it. So you're a prophet, he predicts that those people will never worship what he's worshiping. But later, all of them became Muslims. Do you see how stupid the Quran is? How this can be a book of God? When he said, you will not worship what I worship, that's meaning you will not worship what I worship. But they worship what he worship. Do you see it? Go and read the book, it's called Asbab al nuzul Or read any interpretation. He was speaking to people who later all of them became Muslims. So how he said to them, you will not worship what I worship, and I will not worship what you worship. And later, all of them, they worship together the same what they worship. Chip, chip. Stupid Quran. Copy, paste people. Nobody want to use his brain. Your brain is not useful the same as the ass of Al-Khadr. The ass of Al-Khadr, may Allah bless his ass, obviously his ass is blessed, is more useful. 
I did read the whole chapter, not the whole verse, idiot. It says, you will not worship what I worship, and I will not worship what you worship. You have your belief, I have mine. Later, all of them, they worship what he worship. <laughs> idiot. Any Abdul? Anyone? <clears throat> Any Abdul want to speak about the topic we are talking about? Any Christians in the chat, focus with us, please. Don't ask questions have nothing to do with our topic. Focus, try to be adult, mature. Don't be Abdul. Any Abdul? Any brave Abdul? Why Mr. Faisal he don't call us? Mr. Faisal, if you call me, I'm going to give you the address of the fountain of life. You drink from it, your ass will be blessed. As long as you are in theory, look like you are from the Gulf. So whatever you sit in the, in the, in the sand of uh, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, uh, the, the Dubai, brother, your ass will make the land green. Christian Prince fan, you are going to force me to block you. Stop reposting questions have nothing to do with our topic. This is the last warning. You are very hyper, but in a wrong way. React to Ali Dawa. He has answered your question. Ah, Ali Dawa. He answered my questions. Yeah, he did. So I never, Ali Dawa, I, I never, I never saw Ali Dawa dare to answer my questions. What about you give me his Skype so I can call him? I want to hear the, the the answer of the questions. <laughs> oh, what I know that Ali Dawa was crying for people leaving Islam, asking people for the nation, brother, because he is the only one who can save Islam from people leaving Islam. Did you hear what Ali Dawa he said, brother? Hundreds of thousands of people leaving Islam, brother. Leave Islam every single year. It is going to become... Like what, what? Every single year, what happened? What happened? What happened every single year, brother? No way. Research has shown that over 100,000 Muslims leave Islam every single year. Every... This is what Ali Dawa said. And I assure you, 99,999 from them, they leave Islam because of me. This is your idea. As a kid. Just want your donation. And all this drama is about what? Donate for us. <laughs> Donate for us. A person who loves Allah. Huh? Okay, you want to defend Islam. Why you are... Okay, so you, the, the reason he is scaring you that a lot of Muslims leave Islam so you can make a donation. Scam. Ultimate part, he keeps texting me. He is desperate. He doesn't even know how to, to, to name the, to, to, to choose names. And look, it's going to be a tsunami. It is going to become an avalanche. 24% of Muslim youth are leaving Islam. A tsunami. tsunami you're, you're... Look, look at this guy. Hold on. Muslim youth are leaving Islam. A tsunami. Your, your child is going to become an apostate. <laughs> Abdul, I challenge all your Abduls to give me their Skype. I will call them right now. 
Hmm. I'm here to challenge them how I'm scared. They are the one who don't dare. When I called this coward in the screen, Mimi Hijab, he hung up on me seven times. He did not let me talk. Who's scared? And he edited videos saying, Christian Prince, successful predator. When I was, actually, he is the one who was saying that, not me. He said, oh, Muslim women suckle me. I was quoting your prophet. And the fifth, your sister, she's a whore. He was saying, Jesus, he played with his mother breast. And that's why I mentioned suckle me. He's a coward, like your prophet. He could not debate me, so he, started, he tried to frame me. Coward, he is so much intimidated. And then we find that Mimi Hijab, he go around and he asks Muslim women to suckle him. Is that true? Yes, brother. He go around asking Muslim sheikhs if they can let their wives suckle him. He's making fun of what his prophet taught. Can you believe it that somebody is a believer in his religion? He make fun of what his prophet said? What kind of a believer he is? Here we go. This is Mimi Hijab saying, Okay, can I suck your wife, did? You see the cowards? They could not debate me. They tried to frame me. Sexual predator, uh, Christian prince, why? Because I'm quoting your prophet and your wife, your, your sister, she was filthy, insulting Jesus. It's in front of you. Are you afraid? Are you afraid of what Mimi Hijab is doing? Okay, can I suck your wife's tits? He's speaking that to a sheikh. His name is Muhammad. He's not asking, he's not saying that to a Christian. He's, uh, he's saying that to a sheikh. A sheikh who defending Islam saying, well, this is what the Prophet taught. And not only that, actually, this is was verses in the Quran. Breast feeding and suckling for adult was in the Quran. The Muslim they claim that a goat ate it. I believe that the one who ate it is Mimi Hijab and people of his likeness. They were ashamed of it. And I will tell you why this is a lie about the goat eating the verses. Don't the Muslims they say that we memorize the Quran by heart? Correct people? Don't they say that? Okay. The goat ate pages. She did not eat your memory. Did the goat eat every single Muslim memory or ate one page or two pages or three pages of the Quran? Any Abdul? Obviously, this is the Muhammad and they decide to delete it. And as you see, this is not a hadith. This is was verses sent by Allah. The verses of stoning to death an adult, adult, ten time, adult, ten time was revealed. Breastfeeding for what? Adult, ten time. It had to be ten time. Was revealed. And the funny they say to us, the Quran is preserved. Who is a Muslim can recite for us the verses of a breastfeeding for adult in time? Ask your Muslims, those who you mentioned them, the YouTubers who are just making money from you. They're a bunch of dummies. They don't dare even to say hello to me. The meaning of life? <coughs> the meaning of life? What meaning of life? Muhammad, he did ask him a question even about spirit, he do not know. Who oh, watched the meaning of life? What meaning of life? Look what you believe in. The meaning of life is that you have a, you have a wife, she can give her breast to a stranger, and he have to suck it 10 different times. This is the only meaning of life in Islam. And not only that, the wife of Muhammad, she was ordering her nieces and her sisters to suckle adult men.
Is that true? Read and laugh. And this is Sahih. Yahya related to me from Malik, from, 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 that the, the wives, the Aisha, the wife of Allah Prophet, bless him and grant him peace, admit those who him, her sister and daughters of her brothers had nursed. How did you do that? She opened an office for breastfeeding. Her sisters and her nieces, they take off their breast, put it in the table, because they are big. They can't carry them. They are heavy. And then, anyone want to meet with Aisha, he have to suckle the breast of the sisters of Aisha. Let us show you more hadith. Oh, what a stupid religion. This is religion. If this is religion, what is the stupidity? And this is your prophet teaching Muslim women to suckle a man. Look at this. The guy, he have a beard. And Muhammad is ordering the women to, to suckle him. All of this is Sahih Hadith. And Aisha, she is ordering the same. Can I call you and talk about other subject? I'm a Muslim by birth. Uh, maybe this is, uh, uh, let us see, false Muslim or ultimate. Yeah, this guy is obsessed. He cannot, you know, he cannot give up, that's it. Trying to retain, retain his honor, which is all over the floor. If you have any, he's not answering. So listen, the title today is "Why Allah Sent Musa to School." The answer is to kill a boy, to make a hole in a boat, which will cause it to be drowned. And to learn that he should not be decent, like the story later I speak about a wall was going to collapse, and if the wall collapsed, those people who they were not nice to Al Khadr, they will find a treasure. This is why Allah He sent Moses to learn. This is the knowledge. He kill a boy, he have no guilt, he never commit any crime. This is what Musa has learned. What the point of this? Stupidity. Allah, he destined the guy, to, the, the boy to be a kafir, and then Musa, he was wondering, why you killed an innocent boy? Al-Khadr is teaching him, well, I killed him because Allah revealed to me. What is the knowledge in that? What Musa has learned? How stupid is that? And then, he made a hole in a ship. The ship which is carrying them in the water. And the purpose is that when the pirate they come, they will not take the ship. But you made a hole. And the only way for those pirates will not take it if it's not usable no more. That's mean the ship is drowning. So what is the wisdom in that? As for the ship, it belonged to poor people. Okay. 
make you know working in the sea okay so i wish to make a defect damage in it as they were kings after them to how to size the ship first of all why a king when a size a ship of a poor people which means is useless the king Who in the world want to believe that there is a king he will steal a boat of a poor person which is obviously made of nothing a piece of wood who want to believe such a story and now after we make a hole in it the king it changes his mind but you damage the boat if the king he refused to take it that's mean it is damaged they will be drowning so was Moses was al khadr helping this uh, those poor people what a stupid story This guy is saying it's a good time to call you. I'm calling him, he's not answering. <laughs> Are you going to answer or not? Let me mute the microphone speaker so you guys will not be annoyed with the ringing. He's not answering. People are weird, you know. They said to me, when you can't talk to you, and then when we call them, they don't answer. Ah, oh, he might talk to me privately. Oh, okay, sorry. So this guy looked like he is going to leave us now. He might talk about, okay. I got you wrong, sorry. He's a Muslim, but he is almost out. Uh, Hashim Hash, I don't know, I heard the ultimate fort when you call me. You are not ultimate fort? There's a very famous scholar, Muslim scholar, his name is ultimate fort. I don't know if you heard of him. Uh, big, big scholar. Let us see. Let us look for Hashim. Maybe I was wrong about you. No problem. Okay, Hashim, Hashim, where is Hashim? I'm trying to find you. Okay, here we go. Text me again, text me. I will call you. I'm calling the wrong guy, hold on. I think this is not the fault, he is desperate, but we can kind of see. Okay, we will mute the speakers. Uh, so you guys don't get annoyed.
Answer, answer, Hashim. He's not answering. I know what we'll do with these people. Even Ultimate Fort, you don't want to answer. Do we have any brave Muslim? So this is the wisdom, the guy, he went, he learned to be evil. So let us say there's some people, they are not being nice to me. And then they own a wall, and this wall, if it collapses, they will, that will reveal for them a treasure. So what I will do, I will fix the wall. So they will not get the treasure. Is that the righteousness? Remember, Allah, he sent Musa to learn from al the righteousness. A righteousness is that there is people who they are not nice to al khadr So he decided to fix the wall because if the wall collapses, Look here, by the way, look at this. And as for the wall, it belonged to a two orphan boys in town. And there was under it treasure belonging, belonging to them, okay? And their father was a righteous man, okay? And the Lord intended that they should uh, attain their age of strength to take of their treasure, okay? As mercy from your Lord, and it did not uh, of my own accord, as the blood interpretation, blah, blah, blah. So there is two kids in the town and they are orphan and the wall belong to them. So now if the wall collapse, the kids, you know, the others will take, uh, but hold on, you know, this is, uh, the story here is very silly and very stupid. How many orphans in this earth, they are being treated misjustly? Why Allah don't fix their walls? And what does this have to do with righteousness? What about teaching people righteousness to give the money to the orphans? Fixing the wall will not change anything because sooner or later, the wall will collapse again. And if they if collapse when they are old, will not make any difference till people can take it if they are unjust. This is teaching righteousness. Where is righteousness here? And what make it more ugly is the story of the kid. Do we have any Abdul? Let's see this Abdul here. Well, this Abdul is not answering. I called him many times. The one who called himself Hashim. Obviously, he's playing games. Let me block him. I will give you a chance. Call me one more time. You call me now. Last chance. Do we have any brave wisdom to tell us how righteousness is being taught? And do I need to go to different countries to learn the stupid stories to learn righteousness? And how that make this person more knowledgeable? If Allah, he taught him something, that means he is not knowledgeable. It is Allah. If Allah taught him behind this wall, hello? Ultimate? Uh, uh, shut up, son of Muta. Here we go. I know it's I know it's ultimate fort. How about son of Muta? Yeah. Potato. You know this is this guy is obsessed. He cannot retain his honor. 
the guy who have popos in his wall. Go clean your wall, you idiot. You remind me of your prophet who used to dry his hands after having sex on the wall. On the wall. Have you ever heard of such a clean prophet? Dry his hands. On the wall. Let us see the hadith, hold on. This is why ultimate fart, his wall was so dirty, disgusting. He was following the steps of the prophet. The towel of Allah prophet. Do we have any real, any real Muslim here have anything to say? Any Muslim? May they, may they. Well, Abbas is just a stupid idiot. No, he's just a kid anyway. I mean, we have tons of videos about Abbas. If you want to play with his videos, people will die laughing. We have enough comedy of him. Usually I allow him to talk here, but since the last time he said very filthy words to G about Jesus, I'm not going to let him to talk anymore. Otherwise I used to use him for, you know, entertainment purpose. Do we have any Muhammadan? Any Muhammadan, we have only ultimate fort. Ultimate fort, he make uh, name after name in sky. Any Abdul. So what we learned today, we learned that there is a fish. She have water from the fountain of youth or the fountain of life, and come back to life again. And this is supposedly a fountain Allah created in this earth. It's as exist, brother. And then we have a prophet, his name is Al Khudr, who drank from that water. And since then, when he sat in the ground, his ass made everything green. Isn't it amazing? This is the same ultimate fort. Isn't it amazing? This is Islam. How many of you Muslims really believe that there's a guy, his name is Al Khadr? He was a green, called the green, because when he sat in the ground, everything turned green because he drank from the fountain of youth. What do you think? Anyone? This is the whole story, and this is what behind this story. A fiction about a guy, he has existed long time ago. He was existing in the time of Noah, he was existing in the time of Moses, existing exists in the time of Muhammad. He was in the funeral of Moses, the funeral of uh, uh, all prophets. He was in the funerals. Why? Because he drank from the fountain of life. Stop telling me this guy wanna text you, this guy wanna call you, otherwise I will block you. I block that guy, he is ultimate fart. Don't you learn? I am not blind. Anyone will repeat the same thing. First of all, if somebody wanna text me, he can text me. 
It's not your job to tell me who wanna text me. My Skype is open. I'm not blind, I can see. So don't be silly repeating the same thing. Uh, 